can't go? Yes, you, yeah, you, no, you can't go. What? Let what? them handle it. What? What? Why? What? 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 What do you have to do with any of this? be perfect, Liza. You're a woman other women could look up to. A strong, independent career woman, embarking on her sole journey to motherhood. You're the perfect spokesperson. You've already told me how sacred motherhood is to you, how totally committed you are to raising this child. All you have to do is share those same thoughts with your audience and they will be as spellbound as I was. No. That has to be the most monumentally crocked piece of reasoning I have ever heard. Hello, Adam. What right do you have to give advice to Liza's oh, whoa, whoa, her pregnancy? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait a minute. What right do you have to interrupt my conversation? I don't want Dr. Death within 20 miles of you. Listen, this is my studio. I decide who's here and what they do. I don't mean to usurp your authority. Well, that's good, Adam. Because we were actually doing something before you just ran in here like a wayward tornado. Wear this. Thank you. My apologies. I certainly didn't expect to see him in your studio. No apology necessary, Adam. You had no way of knowing that I work here now. I, I'm not apologizing to you. What happened? No hospital to take you, so you have to play a doctor on TV? <laughs> no problem. My practice is thriving. And maybe you should set an appointment. You're looking a little green these all right, days. All right, all right, stop it, both of you. David is doing medical spots for the news. Is David? Yes, he is, and he was hoping to get Liza to do it with him. I beg your pardon. Our first segment, we're dealing with childbirth, and Liza happens to be the perfect spokesperson. Don't you agree? What? What's wrong with you? Are you trying to destroy her? What's the matter? No butter pickles and hot cherry peppers? Oh, nobody makes a turkey sandwich the way you do, Mama. Mmm, you said a mouthful. And... But now that one looked yummy enough to begin with, didn't it? Uh, there's nothing worse, is there, than something that looks so promising and then disappoints you after the first bite? Kind of like losing your appetite, doesn't it? Is there something deeper I'm supposed to glean from this conversation? Well, you called me here to talk turkey, didn't you? So why don't we address a subject that's on the table, namely Miss Dixie Cooney. All right, let's. You haven't always exactly been her biggest fan, have oh, you? Oh, I know, I know. I treated her mean as dirt there in the beginning, and I blush with shame at the memory. No, it's all right, Mama. We got over it. Besides, nobody's hurt Dixie more than I have. Yeah, you're right about that. You were some sorry excuse for a husband getting all tangled up with that viper, Liza Colby. Spare me the same old song, okay? You want to make it a duet? You're the one who's fretting about what kind of a husband you'll make Dixie, afraid you'll disappoint her again. Yeah. Well, don't do it. Don't? Don't disappoint her again. And don't disappoint yourself, either. Look, if life is a turkey sandwich, you and Dixie are the bread and butter pickles and the hot cherry peppers. And without that combination, you might as well not even bother. Nobody talks turkey the way you do either, Mom. Of course not. Look, I just want you to be happy, Sugar Plum. And the happiest I've ever seen you is when you were with Dixie. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Uncle Palmer, I'm hungry. Uh, I will dump the cat and we'll fly to my favorite Paris bistro. Uh, well, that sounds lovely, but I haven't made up my mind yet, and I'm not going anywhere until I do. You're not considering that callow fool still? Really? He's not, he's not brought anything to you but heartache and frustration. You're a fine one to talk. He is a ne'er-do-well who just skates through life on luck and kind of a boy's charm. You can do better than that. You need a man of substance, some, somebody who's worthy of you. you. You have got some nerve. Oh, all right, all right. I don't want to quarrel with you. I don't. I really don't. I just, I just want to protect you, my dear. But control me, you mean. 
You've always had a soft spot, really. Well, you know, for, for wounded puppy dogs and for broken winged birds. Why don't you let me introduce you to men of real power and accomplishment? Power and accomplishment? Is that what you think makes a real man? Well, no wonder your life is so messed up. No wonder you don't understand Tad. Tad could have been a power-hungry mover and a shaker, but instead he chose to become a good son, oh. a, a good brother, a good friend, and a good father. And you want to know why? Because he's a good man, Uncle Palmer. And there's no greater accomplishment than that. Is everything all right, Dixie? Oh, thanks. Uh, could I get the check, please? You were right to fear commitment. Here, have a cigar. <clears throat> don't smoke these things. Come to think of it, you don't smoke these things. Why not? Oh, right, Dixie doesn't like the smell. Mm. Well, you know, I don't, uh, I don't see her anywhere. You can do whatever, whenever you want. That's the beauty of freedom, Tad. You don't have to change or grow or worry about what anybody else feels. You can be a self-centered caveman for the rest of your life. Is there something else you wanted, sir? We've got plenty of choices on our menu. See anything you like? What's your pleasure? <laughs> yes, indeed. Life is good. Life is good. Who needs a strict diet of monogamy? It's unnatural. Well, what if I need some love in my life? Well, then it's a trade-off. Soul-sucking love or the good life? Who says soul-sucking love isn't the good life? Well, ladies, I I'm sorry. I, I think he's on a diet. I thought you'd been there. Done that. Maybe I can do it better this time. Um, hotel travel services? I was wondering if you could get me all flight information on uh, flights to West Virginia leaving this evening. Yeah. No, you know, I, I don't really care what airline. Okay? Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. <sighs> Just in case. I don't blame you heading for the hills. I mean, Lord knows you have done all that you could. I mean, even just staying in Pine Valley as long as you have must have taken a lot out of you. It hasn't been that bad, Oak. Oh, really? Always being confronted with that same old hurt, that Liza Colby woman in your face every time you turn around? That had to smart something fierce. I'm trying to make peace with that. Why? Why should you? You don't know when Ted is going to pull another fast one. There is no way to predict what these hard-hearted, weak-willed men are going to do next. Believe you me, I know I am married to one. And from where I stand, your opting for the single life makes a whole world of sense. I mean, why lay yourself open to more pain? Protect yourself, honey. What are you saying? I should live life in a bubble? No, no. I'm saying you should pick a different kind of guy next time. You know, play it safe from now on. That widower, Herb Dingley, the optometrist. Now, there is a guy who is nice and reliable. OK, all right, so you won't have all the passion and craziness, but that is far overrated as far as I'm concerned. At least with a guy like Herb, you're not going to catch him hooking up with another woman. Oh, well, that's for sure. Yeah. Be sensible, honey bunch. You know, if you let your heart rule your head, you're going to end up emotional roadkill. So next time, you look both ways before you cross, and then you grab onto a nice, sensible, safe man, unlike Tad. I'm not out to destroy anyone, Adam, especially not Liza. That's paranoid, even for you. Liza. Mm. If you go in front of that camera and expose your pregnancy, instantly, instantly you and the baby 
will be targets for every extremist nutcase that owns a television set. Do, do you remember that, that, that the uproar when that sitcom character decided to have a baby out of wedlock? The vice president came out against it. The, vi the vice president who couldn't spell potato? With everything that's going on in Washington right now, I don't think you and I should no, be no, having no, no. this conversation. The point is, you will be public domain. Now think about that. Think about the ramifications of that. You and the baby. The scrutiny. The possible ridicule. That you, of, of, of all people, should know this. You've used it to your own advantage. Janet Green and Amanda Dillon in The Well. Remember that? And Erica and, and, and Bianca? I don't operate like that anymore. Well, others do. Believe me, they do. They hide behind the people's right to know. And who knows what's going on in their minds? Maybe they're nosy. Maybe it's envy. Maybe it's hatred. I just... I just went through hell because some kook crossed the line and decided to target my family. Eliza... I know you're strong. And I know you can handle a lot of controversial public exposure. Yes. But think about you and what is best for your baby. You know, I, I am tired of listening to both of you. I mean, I appreciate your advice and your admiration. But you know what? Above all, this is me, my body, my decision. So why don't you both just butt out? I'm, I'm more confused now than ever. Jeez. That's right, Shopper. For a limited time, we'll be offering the one, the only, Thaddeus J. Martin. You know him best as the man of your dreams. This Tad Martin comes with a lifetime guarantee of frustration, aggravation, passion, and pure joy. No warranties, no refunds. You take him as is or not at all. This is a one-time offer. Supply is limited, so act now. I can't. I don't know what to do. Finally, girl, I have been waiting all day for you to listen to me and get those other voices out of your head. I know what's wrong with you. Do you know what's wrong with you? You want everything both ways. You want the fire and the security. You want the thrill and an ironclad guarantee. You want a man that every woman wants but no woman will touch. It don't work that way. <sighs> Now we're two. Does it matter? <laughs> you can walk from the East River clear to Coney Island, but you know exactly where you're going to end up. On top of that building, waiting for her. Come on. There's never going to be anybody else like Dixie. No woman will take your breath away, lighten your heart, or make you a better man. If fear is the only thing keeping you from the best thing that ever happened to you, then you're a bigger fool than anyone ever believed you to be, including yourself. What the hell am I waiting for? Adam is right, Liza. It never occurred to me that going public would increase your stress load. I never should have suggested it. They would take your portable seal of approval and well, stuff well, it. Wait, wait a minute. Doesn't anybody want to hear what my opinion is? Not only is it not in my best interest, but I don't have the time, so thank you very much for your offer, David. But I decline. That's good. Wise choice, Lon. Well, oh, I'm so glad we all agree. Not that any of your opinions matters one iota. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I had him Chandler here. What? Did you make an appointment with Adam today? No. I don't know what he's doing, why he's here, what he wants. Well, I can only guess. Is he bothering you at all? Oh, no, I have this automatic Adam force field that snaps into action whenever he's within firing distance. Look, you just worry about your segment and getting it in one take, okay? Time is money. Hmm. He seems to be very possessive of you and this baby. As if he has a personal claim on both of you. How much I've been working lately? A little sleep I've gotten, I have 12 hours off. 12. 
There's been two of them digging around the attic, the other two getting here. Did you find it? Yes, sir. No, 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 no. This, this is gonna cost, cost you. This is gonna cost you. What? Unless this is for Dixie. Look, I didn't kill myself looking for this thing for you. I did it for Dixie. All right, fine. I'll make sure yeah? I'm not to her. Now, may I have the box, please? <laughs> right here. Oh, right here. Oh, come what on. Is this? Come on. Hug me. Hug me. I'm tossing this thing out on the street. Oh, there you go. Hi. I hope this is okay. I know people in New York don't really pop by like they do in Pigeon Hollow. No, no, no. It's fine. I'm glad you're here. Come on in. Thank you. <laughs> Can I get you some? You know what? Um, I would love a glass of water. I'm really thirsty today. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Well, New York will do that to you. That's why you always see people toting water bottles. Oh. Hmm. There you go. Oh, thank you so much. Sure. So, you're still here. Yes, I am. <sighs> I have some things left here that I have to decide, and... Well, that's what I've been doing. I've been walking, and I've been thinking. And on my walk, I found myself in your neighborhood, and I thought I would stop by, you know? I'm packing up and moving to Pine Valley. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's fantastic. Well, you'll love it. It's... It's nice. It's, it's really beautiful. The, the people are friendly, most of them. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just all this rushing around you do in the city, you know? I'm not used to it. Whether you're a first-time mom or expecting your second set of twins, pregnancy is a huge turning point in the life of a woman. Bringing forth new life brings on many physiological as well as psychological changes that most mothers-to-be are just not prepared for. That's where I step in. I'm Dr. Oh, David Hayward, and I'll be hosting this David, series. David, it's really, David, it's really good, but I, I think we're going to run a little long. So. Lisa, what? Please. <laughs> what? Why are you letting him work for you? He tried to kill me. Adam, why are you here? Are you here to criticize my hiring practices? What do you want? No, I'm not. I came to ask you for lunch. Well, uh, call me, then. Don't, don't tell me who I can play with and who I can't play with. I outgrew bullies a long okay. time ago. I, yes, I, I'm way out of line. Just, just grant me some patience while I identify the parameters of our new friendship. Well, chart your map quickly, because my time is valuable and my patience is in short supply. Grandma Kate's? Yeah. How long have you had it? Oh, a long time. She gave it to me one day when she found me crying after Jenny died. I told her I didn't think I'd ever love anyone that much ever again. I think that's why she gave me the ring. She didn't want to take the bet. How come you never gave the Dixie before, though? Same reason. I guess I was scared, you know, I just couldn't. First it was Jenny and then Grandma Kate. I don't know, I just couldn't. Well, yeah. Do you realize this might backfire? I mean, you've married this woman twice before. You never gave it to her. I mean, she might throw it back in your I face. I Look at it this way. This means I'm not holding anything back, right? I mean, this ring means more to me than anything else I own. But that's why it was buried up in the attic? Well, did you know it was there? No. I... So it was safe. You're sure she's going to say yes? Not really. Not really? Well, this isn't a lock? Come no. on, man. How many miles did I drive I to get I told you. Your... I appreciate it. What do you want from me? It's quite impressive, they were. Why, thank you, Chandler. Did you actually catch it? Oh, yes, yes, I certainly did. As memory serves, though, you've already proved yourself quite adept at uh, staging performances. My big concern is that you might cast Liza in the role of your next victim. Liza has nothing to worry about with me, Adam. But how about with you? No, I'm going to be busy watching you. Make no mistake about that. So, this Tad Martin hurt you? Bad enough that you thought about it every day for the last two years? <laughs> yeah. And you want to go back for more? Well, it wasn't all that bad. I mean, there were a lot of good times. Which is why it hurt so much when he threw it all away. 
That's not really particularly fair, is it, though? I mean, I had my part in the throwing. I mean, I took off. He wanted to work on it, and I just... Didn't trust him. No. No, it's really not that. It's... Tad is the kind of person who just doesn't do things halfway. He's the kind of guy who shows up at your door in a, in a, in a chicken suit, if that's what it takes. Dixie, I, I, I had no idea you were that kind of woman. Well, now you know. No, I was just going through a hard time, and I don't know why we were eating chicken fingers every day, and one day he showed up in a, in a chicken suit and, and asked me to marry him. And that's the way he is, you know? He wants 100% of you. He wants to reach right into your heart and take it. And I don't know if I can love somebody like that who has such a very particular weakness without going into it that's, well, it's very hard to accept. Unless they deserve it. Are you really as, as tough as you sound? When I have to be. And I wish I had your confidence. Well, it's not confidence. Well, whatever it is. Why? Because then I'd know that I would be okay. Because then I would be strong enough to allow him to be fallible. And then I could do it, you know, then I could marry him. I bet he's standing on a rooftop in Manhattan right this very minute. Dixie, that's kind of extreme. Oh, no. He's, he's not going to jump. He's waiting for me. I have less than an hour to decide whether I'm going to commit to him. You know, if, if either one of us doesn't show up, then it's over. No hard feelings, no questions asked. You sure he's already there? You know, I'd stake my life on it. I guess this means you're going to the roof. Yes, I guess so. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, you made the right decision. How do you know? Well, you're happy. <laughs> I mean, you even look better. You were pale when you arrived. Oh, well, my stomach was absolutely in knots. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you no, so no, much. No, 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 it's my pleasure. Listen, I hate to cut this short, but I gotta catch my super before he leaves for the day. He promised to find me a subletter. Oh. And then... I got a train to catch. Okay, look, you know what? Um, I gotta call my son, like, right away. Do you think I could stay here and use your phone? Yeah, just shut the door on the way out. Oh, thank Get a you. Walk. Thank you. And I'll see you in Pine Valley. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you in Pine Valley. <laughs> thank you. Hey, good luck. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You'll do. <laughs> okay, Ted. It's you and me, baby. Together forever. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Just got up too fast, that's your problem. Thank you.